you all for being here. Thank you for taking the time out of your days. And even though you're retired, I know that my retired friends seem to be busier now than, than they ever have been. So anyway, thank you very much. First question, I'll start with you, sir, is uh, from where you are now, if you could go back to the beginning of your career, what advice would you give yourself as it pertains to preparing for retirement? Well, when you first start with the agency, retirement is the last thing on your mind. So the, I guess the biggest thing is to just be prepared, know what it's going to be, you know, and know that throughout your career because your career changes that retirement system dramatically. So as things go along, um, for instance, I, I'll give you is um, salary incentive courses. So you don't have degrees or something that are sworn. Um, you know, instead of getting the minimum, Go take those small courses out at the college or your, just a little bit of your time associated, but that little bit of money that's going into there works towards your retirement in the end. So, you know, just make the best benefit out of all of it. Good. Harold, same question. Um, basically, is it getting it is like uh, Mr. Donaldson said here, is education, is learn, because that's stuff that I, well, I, I have the benefit because I've retired previously, but is the um, is learn about all the different programs and really know about the financial stuff, all the programs that the SO offers, the state offers. Um, the other thing is um, as you get older and you're getting closer to the like retirement, one thing is really confusing. It was really crazy for me is that when you get to Social Security and uh, that stuff and the Medicare. Oh my goodness, it's a whole new world. And so I would suggest you start learning about it now. It makes it sounds silly because you guys are still working active and stuff, but learn learn it. There's so many different this, this, that, you know, different ways, different plans. Um, but I think education from the beginning, from where you're at now, um, and all the way up until after you retire is, is learning. And then if you're young enough and if you haven't already done it, savings set up some type of savings. I don't care what it is, 401k, um, uh, other type of things, IRAs, whatever, to try to help you down the road because it changes drastically once you retire. I mean, your pay is different. Um, the medical, like you mentioned, that stuff's uh, harder. Um, some people have TRICARE, the military, and that helps, but um, but it's, it's, it's different. So, I mean, there's some pay things I'm and even though I have the military for like pharmacy and all that stuff, there's times they don't have it. They don't have the stuff. So you're out doing it on your own. So just look at all the different plans and the education is the big thing. Is literally do like the gentleman that helped you is to go learn now. Just like you learn everything that you do now in your career. But that's what about you, Mary? What advice would you give yourself? Mine's a little bit different situation as being the only civilian up here. Um, if a deputy or, or anybody works 30 years, y'all are going to get a lot more retirement than we are as civilians. You're not going to live on it. It's not enough. So I think, I don't see a lot of, I mean, not that everybody's not young in here, everybody's young at heart, <laughs> but the real young gals and guys, they need to start saving now. There's all kinds of, um, of plans and programs if you put away X number of dollars when you're 20 or 25 years old by the time you retire you've got plenty and you can supplement what you get here which is lovely it's nice to have this and then you're on top of your Social Security when you decide to get that it adds together and you'll be fine but you you've got to start saving you got to start saving now and something he said um, once you do turn 65 or even close to it, I did. I got three ring binders. You are going to get. You're going to be inundated with so much stuff. It is overwhelming. Retirement, Social Security, insurance. You will be getting stuff all the time, and then you have to go back and forth to it. And I know it's old-fashioned, but it works. You just get. I have everything all tabbed out, and you have. You just keep putting everything in there and clean it out as it gets uh, out of date. But I would recommend it. I did it for my husband and for myself. And most people aren't 65 yet, but I am. So, but and save is start saving early. And one thing about like the Medicare and Social Security stuff, everybody that will, will talk to you about it, but they always have a plan they want you to buy from them. It's hard to find someone that will talk to you about it that's not selling you nothing, that's actually mm -hmm. trying to assist you. So, that's learn. true. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's crazy. Mike? 
Um, looking across, worked with many of you here. Um, the truth is, if you haven't had a plan yet, it's a little late, so you need a lot of catching up to do to echo everything they've said. If what you're learning or what you know now, force feed it to the younger people, because the plans that sometimes you have and we have available, because I remember before we always used to push the 457, the 457, the deferred comp. Um, that really helps out, especially like they said, like after five years, if you do 30 years, they still pay half your insurance for up to five years. Two years, I'm not gonna have more years because I've already been gone over three years. I'm not gonna have that anymore. So my greatest monthly expense that I'm looking at right now is gonna be my health insurance. So that's looking at, that's why I married a young woman. No, just kidding. <laughs> but, um, so you have to look at that. But if you learn the way these programs work, like especially the 457, that's pre-tax, which means it's taken out of your check before you ever see it, and they don't pay taxes on it, as long as when you pull that money out, you don't pull it out to just buy a boat or something like that. You are able to pull that money out in qualified expenses, like what I do is every year I use my 457, and they pull $3,000 out immediately and they send a check to finance and that pays the, a $3,000 lump. I never paid taxes on that money when I made it and I don't have to pay taxes on that money now. And that money is still in that 457 gaining interest and I'm not paying taxes on that either until you withdraw that money. And they're not just your health insurance but there are other qualified expenses that you can have to pull that money out for to help offset your cost of living and what your expenses are when you're retired that doesn't ban it doesn't hurt you out of pocket quite so much so like i said it, even if it's just lunch money or a small amount per month um, encourage yourselves and everybody else dump money into that 457 that the sheriff's office does it's pre-tax the cafeteria plan and it, it saves that everything from there the other thing too is have a plan like uh, Mr. Donaldson said, it's hard to say Mr. <laughs> um, know what the FRS is, know what they have, and know what their plans are. HR here at the Sheriff's Office is different than FRS. Talk to a financial planner there, talk to a financial planner on your own. A lot of times you can talk to a financial planner that doesn't have anything to do with it and look at your various options for FRS like I did and my wife was aware of it because if you do FRS option one, I mean, it literally, when I die, she gets nothing, it ends. However, if you look at your different options in FRS, know them, learn them, because the gap between option one, option two, option three, and option four was so significant that I could take a percentage of that gap and buy her an exuberant health insurance policy so if I die, it'll cover and then there, that money that's left, that different, you can take that money and invest it somewhere else. So like I said, have a plan, talk to a financial planner. So yes, option one, when I pass away, she doesn't get any of those remaining benefits from two, three, or four, but yet what you can do with that gap from the, the change between option one and those other options, you'd be amazed at what you can do with that money that you get monthly that you won't get if you two choose those other options or whoever your beneficiary is. So have a plan. Uh, learn it, like they said, know it inside and out. Luckily, my last three years here was being over HR, and even though they called me the walking violation, um, I learned a lot from being in HR, and it really helps you plan for the future because without a plan, you're going to be just lost. And that's about it. Okay. Good. Great. What about you? What advice would you give yourself? Um, my situation is a whole lot different than everybody else's up here. Um, I had a plan to put in 30 to 33 years. My plan was cut short because I had to medically retire due to being injured in the line of duty. Um, I only ended up putting in 18 years. Um, fortunately, I had 10 years prior to my service here in the state of Georgia. So I had a little bit socked away from Georgia. Um, the biggest thing I can, I can tell you is you definitely got to plan ahead. And, and like Mike said, if you hadn't started planning, then, then buddy, you've got a lot of catching up to do if you're at this point now and you hadn't started planning. Um, and and, I, and I'm, I'm old school. My granddad and my dad taught me about life insurance, whole life insurance. 
if you don't have whole life insurance and you're healthy enough, if you're younger than 50 and you can get you a good health, a good whole life insurance policy, get it. Because you can borrow off of it. It makes you money in the long run. Uh, it's an investment policy. Get whole life insurance. Um, I've got two of them. I've also got an annuity. What I do is I draw interest off this stuff once a year. It's tax free. I don't pay any, any taxes on the interest I'm drawing off of these, these accounts. So that's extra money coming in for you. Uh, and if you've got the money to do that, do it. You, there's whole life insurance policies out there that you can find that, that are not very expensive. And if you've got good health, then you're a shoe-in to get approved for it. Um, and, and they're not hard to get. They're not hard to find. There's all kinds of it. There, there's more insurance agents around this area than, than Carter's got pills. I mean, there, there's insurance everywhere. Um, and that's another thing. Health insurance, health insurance is expensive. Um, I had to go on disability, so I, I got Medicare early. Um, the sheriff's office uh, offers health insurance, but it's not cheap. It's expensive. And even if you retire 30 or 35 years and you want to keep your sheriff's office health insurance, you're looking at, I don't know what it costs now, what is it, six, six fifty, seven hundred a month now for a single person? That's seven hundred a month for a single person for health insurance. Dental insurance is another thing. Um, your teeth are going to go bad the, the older you get, um, you know. And dental insurance is not cheap. I had to have a crown not long ago, 2000 bucks just off the top. Then I owed another thousand later on. By the time they finished setting the crown and getting everything done, so you're talking three grand for a crown, one tooth. Um, fortunately, I've got dental insurance, so um, it's just there's a lot of planning that goes into it. If you are healthy enough to stay and go into drop, do drop. I didn't have the opportunity to go into drop. Um, I was told I, I was told by my doctor one day that you cannot work anymore. You're done. Um, I had to come in and drop the bomb on the sheriff and the under sheriff and my supervisor. I cried. I was upset. I didn't know what to do. I had to, I, I panicked. Um, I cashed in a life insurance policy that I had that I had that was a whole life insurance policy that I had had since I was 18 years old. My granddaddy had gotten it for me. I cashed that in, paid off everything, every debt I had except the house. Um, glad I did it. Um, you know, some people say, get, take your drop money and, and pay off all your debt with your drop money. I wouldn't do that. I would pay off as much as you could before you retired, take your drop money, put it somewhere where it's going to make you some money, and uh, sit on it. I mean, you can't take it with you, but at the same time, it's nice to have that cushion because you don't know what comes up. You don't know what kind of expenses you're going to have. Um, there's all kinds of different expenses that pop up that I never even thought about, you know. Um, fortunately, I've got myself now, I'm 60 years old, I've got myself now where, um, you know, my biggest expense right now is, is my house. Um, and that's really it. My house, and I, I bought a new truck a while back, and I've got a truck payment. And, and that's really it. That's the only expenses I got. Um, I got Medicare and I got uh, United Healthcare Health Insurance um, supplement that I pay pay for and, and dental, but uh, that's really it, man. That's all my expenses, and and I'm not rich and I'm not sitting pretty, but I'm comfortable, and uh, you know, um, you got to plan. I, thank goodness I planned, and thank goodness my dad, and my granddad, you know, showed me the ropes when I was young. And told me, you know, you got to plan for retirement. You got to start doing that when you're 18, 19 years old. You got to start planning for retirement. And you got these young troops that are coming in now. Um, you know, they're like, like Larry said, you know, and, 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 you know, like we said earlier, you know, you're not thinking about retirement. Um, you're just working. You know, you're having a good time. You're working. Um, get as much school as you can as far as the extra classes to bump your pay up a little bit. You know, every little percent helps. 
But uh, yeah, you got a plan. You definitely got a plan. All right. So, sir, uh, what was the hardest change you encountered when you retired? Leaving these people. Um, the sheriff's office and law enforcement in general. If you stay there long enough, that's your family. I mean, you have two families. You go home at night to a, your wife and kids or whatever, but these people you spend more time with and you entrust them because of the nature of the job, you entrust them with everything you've got on every day, every day that makes it. And so you develop a love for these people as much as you do your family. And walking away from that was the hardest, the hardest thing I did. That's that's most probably the most typical thing I would think that everyone says. What about you, Harold? What was the hardest thing for you? Um, I think uh, when you retire, it's like adjusting to a slower pace. Because um, here, when you're with working, you're you're doing things. You're moving. You're going. You're switching shifts. You're doing. You're you're constantly busy. Uh, working your, your shift, working extra. Um, however, I think adjusting from um, you know the slower change uh, from your active routine and, and the structure that you have with the SO uh, always it gives you structure. You pretty much have guidance. You have uh, it, it, it helps you. It's kind of like you know the military. It, they both have the structure set up. So I would, my thing is to stay. Uh, once you get done, is to stay active. Um, try to stay involved, whether it be an activity, whether it be a hobby, um, working part-time, or if you don't want to work, I mean, that's fine if you can do that. Um, but, uh, but volunteer, do things, stay uh, interacting with, with people, but at your pace, you know, but, you know, so you kind of, don't, ju don't just sit there. Don't just sit around home and, and chill, because that is going to lead to other problems. Yeah. But. What about you, Mary? What was the hardest thing you encountered? Obviously the people. That's number that's first and foremost but luckily I have a lovely group of friends that include me for lunch once a month and I look so forward to that and I think that's really important you have to do that but the other big thing was I'd been in law enforcement since I was 16 I started as a police cadet in my little hometown I worked for five years at FDLE I worked for 25 years here it was broken up but all total 25 years so it's really all I ever knew I felt like when I left, I lost my identity. I felt like I was a crime analyst, and then, and that's a great job. It's it, I loved my job. I loved I loved what I did. I loved coming in every single day of my life, and to leave that was hard. It was really hard, and I was always so proud. People would say, "What do you do?" I'm a crime analyst, and everybody was like. Ooh, you know, and I was, I was kind of like, oh yeah. And then you have to say, what do you do? Retired. You know, you go from way up here to way down there as being retired and old. That was my hardest thing. I'm, a, I'm good now. Um, do I miss it? Absolutely. Yes, I still miss, I still miss working. I still miss the people and the job because I loved it. It was time to go. Um, things have changed a lot, and I really wasn't willing to put in the the um, the training and being out of town. And it was it was time for the new people to come in and take over. It was definitely time, but I do miss it. But that was hard. You you do kind of you 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 lose who you were. But I'm I'm good now. I don't need counseling. Not too much. I do need counseling. That's <laughs> we know that. Yeah. That's always yeah, we know that. Yes. yes. Um, it's just to echo everything they say, you miss the relationships. That's about, honestly, that's all I miss. I miss the relationships, the camaraderie. It's the moments that you share with people in experiences, laughing at things that other people get offended by. I mean, those are, those are the moments, that's what you miss because you don't have that in every day. Um, to, but also a lot of people, like she said, law enforcement is your identity. You know, it is who you are. It's not just your vocation, it's who you are. So what you actually need to do is before you retire, you need to um, expand your circle of friends. If you've, uh, I know they used to give it out, I don't know if y'all still do, uh, Dr. Gil Martin's book. Um, if you could, you guys still give that out? Yep. Read it, <laughs> understand it, because you have to have a life outside of here. Um, you have to have friends outside of cop friends because you do feel a sense you feel a physical 
an emotional sense of loss when you le you leave because you're so connected you're so actually in the know and then but what's funny too is now people will still call you hey there was a big deal in blue water yesterday and i know you live in blue water what what happened i was like i don't have the slightest idea because they still think you're connected even though you're not so you actually feel that loss the greatest when you first separate if i'm I'm with everybody else um, and I found the best way to fill that gap is to volunteer um, I did a lot of volunteer work both at uh, organizations for helping feed you know people um, I mean doing stuff that you enjoy but also the other thing that's nice about it is if after you have all that pressure when you're here go do some volunteer work and you actually feel so much better by doing something for others because you still have a sense of purpose but the great thing about it is you're not in charge and you know when you normally you, you're used to showing up when you're in law enforcement you show up to a scene and you're in charge no matter what you realize now it feels so good to show up somewhere to do something for other people and not really be in charge of anything. And it's just, you still feel like you have a purpose. You're still helping others. You're still giving to the community, but yet you don't have to put that stress on yourself. So you actually feel good about it and you leave and that's it. Uh, Mike and I are kind of on the same page here. Um, I, uh, you miss the people more than anything. Uh, don't really miss the job, although it is your identity when you retire. Um, you are going, feel a sense of depression. Um, I was depressed uh, immensely. Um, and part of that had to do with the fact that I had to medically retire just like that. And uh, it wasn't something I wanted to do or had planned to do. Um, and, and you don't know when you might have to medically retire. You may have a heart attack when you walk out of here and you know, and, and, and next thing you know, you, you're not able to come back to work. Um, it happens. Um, and and I, see, I see my friends and I see people like that. Um, and that happens. But you got to find something else to do besides law enforcement. Law enforcement's all I had ever done from the time I was 19 years old, you know, till the time I retired uh, in 2012. And that's all I'd ever done, you know. Um, so that was my identity, that's who I was, my personality. Um, I started volunteering with PAWS, Panhandle Animal Welfare Society. Love it. Absolutely love it. I was on the board of directors for three years for PAWS. Um, we made a ton of improvements down there. If you haven't had an opportunity to go down there and look, go down there and look, um, and see what, what they've done, what we've done. Um, Pause. Pause is a great organization. Also, uh, Alaqua, and there's so many road dog rescue. There's so many animal organizations around um, that, I've, that I've gotten involved with and, and helping and volunteering with. Um, and believe it or not, um, I even volunteer and mentor teenagers. So, um, I know you're thinking, Greg Porch mentoring my child? <laughs> not happening. Um, but. Uh, I got into that when I became an SRO, and and my me being an SRO, that was absolutely the most rewarding ten years that I had, had spent in law enforcement. Was my ten years as an SRO, and uh, so when I retired, um, yeah, I've I've started mentoring some some hard to reach you know teenagers. Um, so that's um, that's rewarding, and that takes time, and and you get. You got to find something to do with yourself. You know, everybody says, "Oh, go fishing, go hunting, that kind of stuff." Yeah, that's all well and good, and looks good on paper, so to speak, or sounds good. But that—that's not what you're going to do all the time. Um, you got to find something to do, like you said, like Mike said, a sense of purpose. Um, if you got a sense of purpose, then uh, you're good to go. Um, so I, I, I highly recommend finding, you know, finding yourself some some another identity and a sense of purpose do you have anything to kind of add is okay so you talked about losing the relationship so what do they need to do what's your advice to everybody 
like Mike brought up, you need to have friends outside. Is there anything else y'all can think of that maybe some advice on? When you you can become involved in your church or, or, or whatever That's whatever church. interests you. I mean, uh, I'm kind of it, it, and trust me, everybody's story is a little different. I mean, everybody's situation is a little different. I personally live on 20 acres with two horses. I've got something to do when I get up every morning if I want to go do it. If I don't, I don't do it. <laughs> but uh, I guess, you know, for me, um, we started a sheriff's mounted posse at one point, and it's still, it's still in effect. And uh, James Wells, Natalie Wells, you know, people from this agency a little bit are involved in it. And so it gives me a kind of a connection back a little bit to the agency, if you will, because we do some things with the agency involved with Ashley or whomever. And it gave us a little bit of a connection back, but it also gave us something to be doing to feel like you were still a part of the sheriff's office serving the community, you know. Mm -hmm. And you know, little, little as that is, I mean, it's just something, you know. Um, it's difficult. You know, I, you know, I hear that siren go by, and I know I said, "Man, I wonder what they got." Right now, you know? Yeah, it's on your mind. Shortly after I retired, um, there was a traffic crash right near my house. I happened to be coming by with like two or three cars behind it. Pretty significant crash, a lot of angry stuff. And so, roads all blocked, just tore up. Well, the other vehicle coming the other way was another retired deputy. He and I both got there at the same time. We get out, checking on the injuries, getting those related to. And then we start working the traffic. Nobody's there yet. So we're starting trying to help the traffic get around this, this thing, keep somebody getting hurt and so forth. A deputy arrives, and of course, I tell him you got injuries here and injuries there, you know, who they are, so forth. And I said, you're gonna need a couple ambulances, it looks like to me. And uh, he don't know me from Adam's house yet. I mean, you know, he don't try him. And uh, so I was, I was the other guy, either one. He's out there still directing traffic all the And, uh, so anyway, then a supervisor shows up. Of course, he knows who I am, and he, he runs over. Hey, if y'all keep this traffic going for a few minutes, we'll get these dangerous things up. Got it, no problem. So we're doing that. But the deputy still doesn't know who we are. And so a few minutes, he comes over there and tells us, you know, y'all need to move. Okay. Really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah just that's that simple. Mm -hmm. So really, you, you realize where your disconnect is, I guess is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you go into a restaurant and there's a couple of deputies there, you know, unless you walk up and tell them who you are, they don't know who you are, you know. And I mean, that, you just, so that part is kind of a, kind of a hard way to, um, and you know, if, if, you want, if you want to stay involved with that, you've got to interject yourself. They're not going to interject you. You know what I'm saying? You've got yeah. to go over and start a conversation with them. Don't, don't be shy about that. Walk over and say, hey man, you doing a good job. How you doing? Introduce yourself or something. That's okay. And, uh, it's usually well well received by the officer, you know. Hey, you know. But uh, but that's just kind of you got to find a way to kind of work yourself back to wherever you need to be to satisfy yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. What about you, Harold? How, what's your advice on the relationships? Well, I think just like everybody said, is uh, it's important to make uh, contacts and acquaintances with people outside of the law enforcement community because what you guys do and everything here, you should be proud of it and all. But at some point in time, you're going to retire and for whatever, you know, when, whenever you're ready, hopefully when you're ready. Um, but it's important to make uh, contact with people and have other, um, like uh, Mike Card said, uh, activities and things that you want to do and start, start getting your fingers out in there now instead of waiting to the end. So when you do uh, retire, then it's not like like an abrupt thing you know it's like you, you already kind of you already have other things to do and be involved in you talked about a lunch group that you have once a month is mm -hmm. there any other advice you have for people to go ahead and start now go ahead and start now cultivating your relationships don't be afraid when i i kind of waited till i retired um don't be afraid to go ahead and start joining things i joined the niceville senior center like everybody knows and i just walked in right by myself i didn't have anybody i didn't know anybody there but i said i've got to do it don't be afraid just go in i signed up for some classes i took some pickleball lessons right by myself and now i have oh probably a hundred friends that we play pickleball together i mean not that we we don't do a lot other than that but that's a wonderful outlet I, I went to my church. I didn't know anybody in this one particular ministry that I signed up for. I started there, and now we have a wonderful group. So you'll find that camaraderie in different places. You will miss it. 
Um, and don't, when you retire, don't say, okay, I'm going to clean out the closets. <laughs> no, I mean, that is not going to, you've got to find something, because number one, it's not going to happen. I said that two, two and a half years ago. How, ask me how many closets I've cleaned out. Zero. Um, but you have to find your joy. You have to find, and be thinking ahead. What is it that brings you joy? What is your passion? Don't, you've got to wake up every morning. He disagrees, I know. But you have to wake up every morning with a purpose. You have to say, something has to get you out of bed every day. Whether it's your workout program or it's your reading a book. But you've got to have You've got to have stuff to do every day. And not a routine, not a schedule, but you have to have a purpose to get up and get out every single day. Or you won't survive. You cannot just, I agree, you can't just stay home. But find a, everybody has passions, everybody has hobbies, but you get to pursue them even more now. Just figure it out ahead of time though. Don't wait until you retire and then say, okay, now what am I gonna do? It's not gonna work. It's not. You have so many skills still to offer in everything because most people that come out of this line of work, you're organized, you're efficient, you can plan, you can, you can change things on the move. So there's a lot of things that you can offer. I am a, uh, I'm a hobbyist cook. Um, many people know that. Um, and then I ended up teaching at-risk kids at Emerald Lagasse's in Santa Rosa Beach cooking classes. Um, with legitimate shit trained sh culinary chefs that are going there teaching cooking classes and then somehow I got my wife volunteered me and I'm out there now I'm teaching cooking classes for kids like I said it's like she said take something that was a passion of mine I just did on the side but on the other hand you know just showing up you know they when you have this type of lifestyle when you even when you volunteer you show up you're on time you're sober you're clean um, I mean, you're articulate, you can, you can carry on a conversation, you're organized, you can follow instructions, you can give instructions, and what you can do, and like he, he said, you know, whether it's at PAWS, whether it's mentoring children, whether it's volunteering at your church group, joining civic groups, you guys have a skill set that you have learned over the years. You also can tolerate a lot of crap that other people you will see start pinging and lose their minds over, and it won't affect you at all because you're so used to dealing with drama that when you see people getting excited and irritated and highly agitated because of it, they just look at you, how do you stay so calm? And many of you know me, I'm not the calmest person in the world. And they know it just doesn't bother me to the area where it bothers them. So you can take the skill set you, that you've learned and you can, you know, in many different things and, and use those. And like I said, you can take a part of what you know and a part of what you are and a part of what you do and apply that in other places. She's highly organized. She's efficient. Like she says, she still, she does binders and lists and books. That stuff she's been doing for years because she used to build case files. But now she does that to keep her own life organized. But if you volunteer somewhere, she can take that same efficiency and show somebody else how it's done. They may do it electronically and put it into a computer, but you're going to learn how to organize, how to detail, and how to set things and goals and then how to, how to move forward with those. So like I said, you learn a lot of skills here and start doing that before you retire. Honestly, start doing that before you retire because there is a loss you will feel because you're going to have a lot of friends that you had here and then you're going to, like she said, she has a, a, a nice group of people that she goes to lunch with once a month, but that's not the same interaction that she had with everybody before. So you're still going to feel that loss. And then, yeah, there's people, you know, social media helps in some way. It's a double-edged sword. It lets you still stay, stay connected and see what people are doing, see what your friends are doing. But on the other hand, you know, social media is social media, so it's also the devil. So, yeah. But it, it's good to have something going on. I think mm -hmm. I started three years out before retirement when I started realizing, okay, it's getting close. And believe me, three years goes by like that. Have that plan. And so when you, when you separate there's still going to be that uncomfortableness but if you can I threw myself in volunteering and that really it, it, it like she said it you know mine was more of a loosely when I get up I will show up sometime and I will help you do a project and then I will leave when I feel like it but believe it or not even if you're you just show up for an hour you show up for 90 minutes they are so grateful that you're there and that you're helping mm -hmm. and that you've left 
and you go there and you don't complain, you don't you don't have that same drama. You see something that's wrong, you may make some suggestions. Of, hey, let's we consider this. Like I said, those are skill sets you learn, skill sets that you can still apply, and they help other people. And they're they're grateful. And then you leave, like she said, it was a purpose. I got up, I did something, I left. Now I feel good about it. Because you, you get out as a deputy sheriff somewhere, you're always in charge. You know, you show up somewhere, you're in charge. You're you're the manager. You're management. Um, and that's something that's hard to get used to. And and that was that was one of the things I, I actually learned to enjoy um, by volunteering somewhere. I can go volunteer. I can you know, like Mike said, you can show up. You can do what you you got to do, and you don't have to be in charge. Um, now it's hard to get used to. It's hard not to take charge and, and be in charge, but at the same time, uh, I've gotten used to not being in charge, and it's pretty darn nice. Um, I just go and do what I got to do, and and uh, you know they're grateful. I'm grateful. I got something to do. I'm having a good time, and uh, I don't have to take it to the house and and keep up with the books and and manage it. Is it important for people to know that their spending habits are going to change when they retire? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, to some degree. Um, I'm, I'm probably, I'm very fortunate. I'm very blessed in that area. But uh, you know, if anybody wants to know, come ask me, I'll tell you how. But, but at any rate, you know, the insurance is going to be your one big thing that's going to hit you right in the face. Boom, you got to have insurance. If you got a wife, if you got on the same policy, it's expensive. I don't care what you do. Um, depending upon your age, I was 56 when I walked out the door. So for five years, the sheriff's office paid half of my retirement, um, or half of my insurance, excuse me. And after five years, I picked it up and paid the rest. I was very fortunate in that my wife worked for a company, a local company, and uh, their policy was if she worked 30 years, they paid it until she reached Medicare age. So I didn't have to pay for hers. Hers was already paid and covered. So, that's why I say I'm blessed in those areas because I didn't have to worry about that. But, uh, you know, your spending habits are going to change in that, okay, what are you, what are you going to do today? I mean, are you going to go out to lunch? Or are you going to go, you know, are you going to spend money doing, if you go do something, you're probably going to spend money to do it while you're doing it. Um, when you get in your vehicle and drive somewhere, that's your gas. Well, I'm not sheriff's office gas in their vehicle, you know, <laughs> a little bit different there. But, uh, you know, so there, there's a there's a habit there's a habit you got to get into to understand that, and and you know, like I said, everybody's situation is a little bit different, but you got to uh, you just got to know how much you got coming and how much how much you're going to need to live off of and what's extra, you know. And uh, you know, like I said, everybody's plan is different. Everybody's everybody's different just because of that. And uh, but you got to think those along those lines. When I retired, you know. I knew how much I was going to get a month. I, mean, I, I checked into retirement. I, I called them. I didn't just I pick up the phone and talk to somebody. I said, I want to know how much I'm going to be getting. So I knew what I was going to be drawing a month on the pension plan. I stayed in the pension plan. And uh, I knew the, I, I had researched the one, two, three, four, the different the options, the options yeah. you, you choose. And those options could be different for everyone, you know. And uh, I didn't. I personally didn't choose option one, and there was a reason I didn't. But, but at any rate, you still got to assess that to your age versus your expectancy of how long you're going to live. You know, a lot of that has a lot to do with it. And so, anyway, there, there's a, just a whole lot of factors that you got to deal with in that. And then uh, you know what you're going to draw. Of course, my first thought was, can I live off this? You know, can I can I continue like I'm doing right now without any change? Um, and I thought, well, I'm, I'm 56 years old. It's not hard to find a job, you know. And, and so honestly, I didn't have I didn't have to hunt a job. I didn't need a job. So I went and got a job. I just, you know, I didn't need one. So nothing's really changed. So it's kind That's of good. Along. What about you, Harold? Yeah, spending habits. your spending habits will be different initially, unless you know you set pretty well, and that's fine. Some people are set and have made plans, but a lot of us didn't. I didn't, and you know you just have to watch what you do because yeah, you're getting less money, about half pay different from what you were when you were active. Um, so you know this cutting back things, making you know planning your trips a little bit better because so, you're using the gas and with the gas prices, you know things constantly changing. Um, but yeah, there was a lot of different changes. 
I think, uh, that you have to make, uh, at least be more aware of. Um, but again, go back to, like uh, Larry was saying, uh, know about your pay and SRF, the stuff before, right now with FRS, before you get out and kind of start knowing exactly what you're going to get and have. Um, and so hopefully you won't have to, to work. But if you do, then maybe work part time. Um, but it, it's definitely different uh, with things that you don't really expect. And then, of course, everything rising, the rising cost of the insurances, the rising cost of your uh, all kinds of things, your car insurances, different, you know, different things. But so I just say you just got to be aware that it'll probably be a little bit different, at least for a period of time till you get it, you know, worked out where you're good and then you'll go on from there. But well, I'm in a different situation because my husband still works. He hasn't retired, so he can, my spending habits, no, they've not changed any. <laughs> I love it. That's good. Just ask him. <laughs> but um, once he retires, which is probably going to be in the next year or so, he is probably, he, he's going through the same thing right now, and he may continue to work one day a week just to keep just to make sure he has something to do one or two days a week and to supplement our income but as long as you talk to your financial advisor you have a fin financial planner everything should be in place and it's a might be a different mindset that you you think oh i'm retired now i can't spend the money but if you've planned well and your advisor says you're fine then you, you'll be fine i don't think it's a reason to panic like she's she said mine hasn't changed a lot because speak to a financial planner have a plan have a retirement plan i had estimated what my frs retirement would look like initially and a couple of years prior i mean have a plan and then what i did is i started living on an income of this is what my retirement income is going to be like so the money between what I was making here and then three years out to when I was going to retire, I started socking all that money away. So I got used to living at a certain level, at a certain standard, at a certain income. So you know this is what it is. So you're, you're perfectly comfortable with it. So when it comes in, that becomes your income. And it's very unique to getting paid once a month instead of twice a month. So you have to actually make all your plans and all your bills and have everything established and have a budget set up so that you have that money and in case anything else happens like le last night my air conditioner went out so I got to deal with that between three and five today and I don't know how much money that's going to cost me a so, lot a lot <laughs> because so but again having that plan I had socked money away so you have your 457 you can have a 401k you can have savings plans you can have all sorts of plans where you can put that money away so if you have again it's something you need to start planning before you retire put that money away the other thing i thought of too is i want to have you know what my expenses are and everything else so i started looking at cars five years prior to retirement or four years prior to retirement and found a car I really wanted and I really liked and I bought that car so then I knew by the day I retired that car would be paid off that's another expense I wouldn't have and then and those that are in sworn and some very few of the civilian positions if you have a agency vehicle you have that agency vehicle you're hardly driving that so I put my car in the garage I very rarely drove it so in five years I retired, I had a car with 9,000 miles on it that was still like brand new condition that had been sitting in the, in the garage. So, I mean, if you have a truck or a car, whatever it is you want to do, start looking at those investments and what those payments are going to be. So when you retire, when I retired, I, everything, I, I live, everything's paid off. I don't have any debt except for my home. So I had a plan so that when I did retire, I wouldn't have any of these expenses if unless and then with the money I saved if I wanted anything else I've I've purchased it and I still don't have any debt so it's it's having a plan living by that plan and trying to stay within that plan yeah there's always going to be other expenses that you're not going to expect but the earlier you prepare which is again force feed it to the younger newer generation and they're probably not going to listen to you because I didn't listen um, and I, I was probably halfway through my career when people were really like, look, you need to plan for retirement even though it's 15, 20 years away. 
But it goes by quickly. It does. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would like to add, I did. I have heard that if you can pay off your house ahead of time, that's a huge thing for retirement. If you can start doubling up on your payments, if you start early doing that, and by the time you retire, if your house is paid off. And look at, talk to a financial planner about that too, because what you're paying in your normal payment also includes most people is their escrow, which is your taxes and your insurance. Um, and mostly what you're paying on is principal. But even if you just do another half payment of whatever it is, buy buy monthly send your regular payment then halfway through the month send another whatever you can send that drops down your principal you will not exponentially you will not believe how fast it goes down so even if you do have a house payment when you retire it isn't going to be much before it's paid off mm -hmm. yeah Greg what about you spending habits um spending habits definitely changed I worked a lot of off-duty details you can ask anybody in here that, that knows me. I worked off duty details all the time. And I was constantly socking away money. Now back then we didn't, you know, we made ten, fifteen dollars an hour. Now these guys are making thirty-five, forty-five, sixty-five dollars an hour on a part-time job. Oh, man, I, that's a dream. Good lord. I wouldn't know what to do with that. Um but I socked away. I socked away a lot when I was working part-time jobs. Um, one thing too is you, you got to plan and have your money because a new set of tires. I had to buy a new set of tires not long ago for my truck. That was twenty-one hundred dollars. Now, used to when I worked off the details, you know, I could make twenty-one hundred dollars in a month or so working at Emerald Towers. You know, six days a week. And I'd pay cash for my new tires, and that'd be it. Now you got to kind of budget it and plan ahead, and you know know where the money's coming from. I'm like Larry; I'm kind of old school. I'm I'm just straight FRS retirement. Um, but I get two checks a month. I have my my retirement check, and I have my Social Security check. And I can tell you to the penny what that check is on each one of those checks. And what it's going to take me to live off of that month. Um, I also have a setback amount that I put back. You know, we got our raise this year, three percent. Um, that three percent, I always put my raise back. And when I was working, if I ever got a raise with the sheriff's office, I always put that raise back, and just kept living off my paycheck that I had prior to getting that raise. And if you learn to budget that way you'll always have a little bit of money put back. Um, I, uh, you know, that way you got money to go out to lunch with your friends and that kind of stuff. You got, you got extra money for tires. You got extra money for, you know, just different things that, that come up. Thank you, Greg. Financial planners. So this is something I always debate with people because it seems like law enforcement is suspicious of having a financial planner for whatever reason. I've had one for eight years. And the argument is, well, they're going to get all your money. Well, yeah, they're going to get your money. I mean, they hear like the one-off cases where somebody did something illegally that they weren't supposed to do. Uh, but they have a benefit from making more money is they're making you more money. Mm -hmm. So would you recommend a financial planner to everybody? Everyone? Well, yeah? I would. Okay. Absolutely. I, yes. you know, I, I, I pretty much did my own. Okay. Um, but, but like I said, fortunately, my dad and my granddad sat me down at a young age and they were my financial planners they yeah. showed me what to do and how to do it um therefore i you know i keep up with my own stuff i don't have a financial planner but i i've got i've got good friends that have financial planners and they're doing well and their financial planners yeah they're doing well too but they're doing well because they're doing well mm -hmm. as their client so um yeah, if you want to go the way of getting a financial planner, then by all means get you a financial planner. Can't hurt. Can't hurt. Do you have something like I, I like financial planners because there's always somebody smarter than you are. Um, you may know everything, and a lot of times you can talk to a financial planner, and if you have where they're managing a couple of your accounts, you, act, you can have some that actually you don't pay them any commission. They make money only if you make money. So they take a percentage of what you make. So, but then they, they, if you develop a relationship with them, they can end up getting, I mean, they'll give you advice 
about all sorts of things about finances. Um, they can also recommend people for getting your taxes done and what different benefits you have. I mean, just having that connection because, I mean, that's what they do. I mean, and they're really good at it. And I'm not that good at it. He 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 is apparently, but I'm not. So I. And I, I went in there literally, I went in there, my wife and I, like I said, a couple years prior, we had a financial plan and we started discussing it early before we retired. We had a plan, we had an idea and a concept and that's always changing. It's okay, remember, you, it's okay to change a plan, um, just flow with it. But financial planners, yeah, they're not all great and it depends on who you're gonna talk to. I mean, if you're gonna risk your whole you know savings or something like that you know risky stuff me I'm not risky I that's why I did the pension plan a lot of people especially my age when most of us did the pension plan we didn't do the investment plan seems nowadays everybody's getting pushed towards the investment plan which is kind of for me that I like having that guaranteed known amount every single month I have security in that it makes me feel better that way there I know I'm gonna get like he said to the penny I know I'm gonna get this every month no matter what F financial planners can help steer you around you still have this is what you what your knowns are and if you want to mess with the market or insurance or trading or property or anything like that that's what your financial planners are for that'll tell you okay this is what your costs are this is what your living is this is how much money you need you have this much money you know if you want to go on vacation whatever start socking this money away to do this and if you want to do other things we'll pay maybe return investment then you have high risk high yield things um, but then you have the, the, you can lose everything so again they that's what they're for to say hey you may want to take this this and this if you have the other ones that go you know okay let's go ahead and invest this money it's a great company we're do, they're just they're typing in their computer and we're going to put two hundred thousand dollars into this it's your whole savings over here blah 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 and it's gone you know as soon as they hit enter you can lose everything so i mean it that's what those people are for to make sure you don't do that i tried day trading for a while it's a nightmare it's hard to keep up with. It's hard to keep up with. <laughs> I came out with like $26 in total of what I actually, <laughs> in the plus, so I didn't lose anything, yeah. but my mind. But financial planners, yeah, absolutely. And if you have that relationship, you can talk to them and they can really steer you in the right direction. And again, they give advice. You can then research it yourself too and you make the decisions what to do with your money. Yeah. Uh, was there any surprises with FRS when you got to that point? Did anything surprise you about FRS? Me personally, no, because I knew what was going on with FRS. I mean, I, I had, like I said, I picked up the phone and talked talk to them, and I, I knew what to expect. I knew what was going to happen. I knew when my paycheck was coming. I knew everything. And, uh, you know, when I started to leave here, the, the process has changed so much, I'm sure. but. One of the ladies that I had to process out with, I guess that's a proper terminology, she started telling me stuff with her. So I said, no, no. I said, you're wrong. She, she argued me a little bit. I said, you're not correct. And so, and she, uh, one of the sheriff's office policies we argued a little bit about, I said, look, you need to go find out because, so you'll know. I already know. I already know what's going on. You know, I mean, trust me. I mean, you don't work here 35 years and not find out this thing before you walk out the door. Yeah. Um, I know FRS has changed dramatically for y'all from what it was for me. You know, I mean, three percent a year, that's not the correct case anymore, I don't guess. Um, but I mean, if you do the math a little bit, if you work 30 years, you got a three percent multiplier, okay, that's 90 percent. And then you do drop for five years, that three percent increase is still going up on what you were going to draw at the end. Not hard to figure out what you're going to be drawing is almost what you what you have. So, yeah. I mean, that's, those are the kind of things you need to figure out ahead of time. Fiscal year starts one October, or y'all's physical year starts one October. The state of Florida is one July. So if you want to retire and you want to cash out your leave and get the max benefit, you have to get paid in that last paycheck the month prior and retire on one July or before one July. Yeah. You so I think my last paycheck was like the 17th of June. So I had to retire and I had to sell out all my leave 
that was going to be accountable and the FRS will include 500 hours of annual leave that will go to your maximum year of compensation the hundred hours of sick leave is not calculated you get the money here but they don't put it into your FRS money but again if you retire after July their calendar year starts July 1 so if you retire in August they only count you that was two months so everything you cashed out and all the leave you cashed out doesn't count towards your high five it'll only actually count for those two months so again that's part of having that plan and knowing what the rules are so that's important to know um, yeah, uh, because well. our HR here their job is to separate you from the agency when you retire and show you what your benefits are if you want to mess around with what your FRS benefits are you really need to be informed read those books and talk to the people over there yes a lot of people do talk to them on the phone but I'd recommend if you want to really do get it down to brass tacks drive to Tallahassee for the day go in there make an, have an appointment first and talk to the people there it makes so much more sense um, because you I mean there are two there's they are two separate entities because you're when you retire here it's a retirement you separate from the agency and they help you guide you along the way but what happens thereafter is FRS is the ones that do it. and then also have money saved away because it's gonna be a month before they send you or more before they send you a check then also look at it too there is also a uh, paperwork you can fill out where they will give you a subsidy for health insurance as well it's not much but like every dime counts so it just went out to you yeah, yeah. Uh, Greg did you experience any surprises that surprised you I didn't really have any surprises um, I was just surprised to have to medically retire that was my biggest surprise Such <laughs> of a panic state that uh, yeah they they helped me here but it's worth it. It's yeah, worth they, it. Go over there and make a lunch the day out of it. And yeah, the and information they got on the phone was good, but when yeah. they got there in person, they were able to. They walked away with zero questions. Yeah, so. they'll sit down, show it to you. They, you know, they've got it all right there, and those people know what they're doing. Okay. Uh, how important is it for people to stay active after they retire? Very. That's very, very important. Very important. That's the number one priority. Um, don't go home. Don't just sit around. Don't find something to do. Um, when I was working, I went to the gym. Five days a week, four five days. <laughs> yeah. And my gym coach, when I left, I was gone. You know? So I did that for a while. And I skip a day, skip a day, I skip a, skip a week, you know. It's, it's just easy to. But I was finding other things to occupy my time. So my point is, don't lay up in the bed till 12 o'clock today. So oh, I'm going to get up and not do nothing. Find something to do. There's always something you can do. If you don't have something that you like to do, go out and volunteer and find you someplace to do it at. Don't, don't just do nothing. You need to stay active. Old age creeps up on you in a hurry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, to more supplement income. It's just something that came along. I, I mean, I can get by because I'm retired military and retired from here, so I can get by without having to do it. But I just wanted to do something to be involved and stay in touch with people. Yeah. And I like dealing with people. And so it just um, I want, actually there's a former deputy that was here, and she's in law uh, real estate. And I had started talking. And next thing you know, I was up in this. And I like doing it. It's fun. I mean, it's extra money. Um, as long as you sell, but, yeah. um, and that's that's something too. You know, hey, you got to get out there and do it. And I don't do it like a lot of these uh, young agents and stuff or whatever, young older agents, whatever, because um, they have to do it. I mean, it's their their career, their apart, so they can find everything. You know, go ahead and get it done now, and figure out what's going on. Don't wait until it's too late. Because you want to enjoy you, you when you retire, it's not the end. It's just the beginning of a whole new life for you, and you want to be healthy. You want to be able to travel and do things with your grandkids, and and just stay active. So just keep up with your health now. Something I hadn't done 25 years scuba diving. I went through the whole certification course again because it had been literally probably more than 30 years since I've dove before. But now I get to go out there with you know the artificial reefs, we're sinking boats. I get to be the first person to dive on these, you know, new vessels that are getting sunk out in the Gulf of Mexico. 
and it's a blast. And Heidi I showed me the pictures. I'm sorry. Heidi showed me the pictures of you <laughs> in your dive suit. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I look like a like a straw with a blueberry stuck in the middle. Of it. <laughs> it's like oh my, that's disgusting. It's like it's, ter it's terrifying. But my wife still loves me, so I don't care what everybody else thinks. <laughs> but it, it it really does. I mean, it you 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 have to. I mean, you, you got to stay active. And believe it or not, when you find that you're volunteering and you're helping and you're just out in the community, you're going to meet other people there. And they're also going to be connected with other groups. And they're going to say, hey, why don't you come over here and do this with us too? And then before you know it, you're busier in retirement than you ever were when you were working. And I, I often say, I don't know how I ever had time to have a job because there's so much going on. But the, the other blessing of it is, unlike Mary, I don't get up every day, you know, when after the alarm goes off and my wife leaves for work, I take a nap <laughs> or whatever, whatever. And I'll get up and I'll binge watch something on Netflix that's just so, it's like, well, I just wasted three hours of my life. I have no idea why I watch this, but I know more about sharks. And, <laughs> and so, but then you can still get up and it's like, well, now I have, you know, I'm have membership at the gym and you meet and then you go there and you meet people that are there and it's like the crossfitters are still a cult I don't care what anybody else says they're interesting people but the but the regular people that are in there and then you, you do you have the guys that come in there that are huge and you have the people that are real skinny and they're you know and then it's just and everything in between so you still find some people you can connect with everywhere you go every activity you participate in and it's cool because we are social people and a lot of us it's just it's interesting you see some of the people that go to the gym and they hardly ever work out but they just sit there and talk to each other all the time and then they leave mm -hmm. so i mean <laughs> That's me. <laughs> yeah. Brian's over there trying. Brian's in there. Brian's there trying to work out, and I'm over there talking to him, drinking my latte. <laughs> I'm just kidding. What about you, Greg? Uh, advice on staying active? Um, yeah, it's a little different for me. You know, I've got an artificial hip, and both my feet and ankles have been rebuilt, um, so it's a little different. But. Uh, I have a treadmill. I'm on that treadmill twice a day for 40 minutes each time. Um, when I was at when I was at SRO, you know, you're always up moving. You're always on your feet as a deputy or you know working at the sheriff's office. You're always walking around. You're always doing stuff. There for a while, we always were in a habit of putting those clickers on our feet or on our boots that we wore all the time to see how many steps you walk each day. Um, it was nothing to walk anywhere between 12 to, to 15,000 steps a day when you worked at the school. Um, so um, I always stayed pretty active as far as walking, you know, in the schools. But um, I don't have a clicker now and keep up with how many steps I walk. But I do uh, get on the treadmill twice a day and uh, try to stay halfway, you know, healthy. I'm probably healthier now than I was when I worked at the sheriff's office. Um, uh, I do have di type 2 diabetes, but, uh, you know, um, that's just one of those things that comes with older, old age. Um, I see a doctor every three months, have blood work done, you know, regular physicals every year. Um, you got to stay on top of your health. I know guys that uh, have, uh, you know, lost half a foot or lost toes or fingers or different things because of diabetes and not keeping up with their health. Um, I know somebody that had to, you know, have a foot almost amputated because of just not going to the doctor, not looking after themselves. Mm -hmm. um, go to the doctor. Don't be scared of them. Go to the doctor, you know, take your medication, do what you're supposed to do, and, and rock on. Because, um, I mean, 60's young. 60's the new 40. I'm 60. So, um, you know, the way I look at it is I got a long ways to go. And I plan on being here. So. Find, find look, a, look after yourself. Find a good family practitioner. <laughs> yeah, and absolutely. One, and one that's not going to retire soon. Mm -hmm. yeah, good luck. Get you, get you a young one, somebody that's up on the latest medications, up on the latest things uh, in their practice. Um, I've got a young uh, doctor that's uh, he's only uh, 41 years old, and uh, I started seeing him about six years ago, and uh, he, you know, he's he's aggressive. You got to find an aggressive doctor. Um, somebody that, that's gonna, gonna, you know, they're interested in looking after you. 
you're not just going to walk in, pay you $45 copay or whatever your copay is, and then, uh, you know, they tell you, okay, you're doing good, refill your medications, or, you know, see you next time. Mm -hmm. And preventative care is much cheaper than the, the other set. Yeah. And if you, if you do have the ability, and it's everything in moderation, I mean, honestly, your whole life, everything, because when I did do the, uh, the health insurance and there's other things they do, they took like 35 vials of blood from you and they, especially because I was 51 when I got it, if I had done it at 49 or 50, it would have been exponentially easier and it would have been a lot cheaper. Yeah, that's, not, that's, that's what I was talking about with your whole life insurance. Get your life insurance early because once you hit that 50 mark, You've got five years, and then the price is going to go up even more once you hit the 55 mark. And once you're 55, your your chance of getting whole life insurance after age 55 about slim and none. The other thing is, is it's a lot cheaper the less medication you're on. Yep. It's so if you're like 52 and I got mine, and don't take any medication whatsoever, but just supplements daily then it's it'll, it'll cost you a lot less money not having to get prescriptions filled all the time it's going to cost you a lot less money yeah. so again i mean things are going to happen things you know just recovering from my second spine surgery six weeks ago so it it expenses are going to come up they are going to happen but if you because i was healthier than normal or anyway I was healthier, my recovery was faster, the need for medication was fast was faster. So I mean the the out of the expenses are a lot cheaper. So staying active, staying busy, and it's not just keeping your body active, you gotta keep your mind active because you see a lot of people that just sit around and they don't do anything and they just watch TV, honestly. Your mind is gonna dull and you're gonna start losing cognitive ability and you need to just stay active. Yeah. And, and a lot of these medications, some of these medications are, are, are super expensive. Um, and sometimes your insurance doesn't cover. You'll, you'll, your doctor puts you on a new medication, you'll go you know, to the pharmacy or whatever to get it filled, and all of a sudden uh, your copay goes from $5 to $95 on this certain medication because it doesn't have a generic and it's a new medication. and. Uh, pharmaceutical companies can charge you whatever the heck they want to charge you. 